And I told him to sleep that the hunger would go. Oh, he would. He keeps crying. Jude, don't cry again, eh? I will get you something in a moment, okay? Bye-bye. How can somebody work for two months without pay? Eh? 
Okay. I brought some food. Daddy, welcome. Thank you. Chooks. Sir? Yes, soup. Here is Gary. Make some of that. But make sure you don't finish the soup. Oh. your brother Chris. He's fine. We only get to see him on television and newspapers these days. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so what brings you to my store today? This is my son, Chooks. How are you? Fine. I brought him to you. I want you to take him as a sales boy. Sales boy? Yes. And what about his school? I have some problems. Since I left the motor pass business, things have been so rough with me. I don't have a good job. The construction company I joined after I lost my former job has not paid me for the past two months. My five children have stopped schooling because I cannot pay their school fees. I cannot even feed them well. Now I'm being forced to give them to people as servants. Chooks is a very good boy and very obedient. I want you to take him. Listen, Oga Lucas. I have children. What I do not wish my children, I will not wish yours. If I take this boy as sales boy, I will feel guilty for the rest of my life. If he is going to be in business, then he requires sound education to fit into today's business. Don't you forget, the world has become computerized and digital. This boy should go back to school. But how? Listen, Chris is your brother. Go to him and explain things to him. I have explained things to him. He promised to help, but... Oh, God, Lucas, please hear me out. I am not talking about promises. I am talking about meeting your brother with the true position of your problems and the children. What we are deciding now is the future of your children. And the way you handle it is the same way it will affect them tomorrow. Your brother is rich. He has chains of businesses including Medas Oils Limited. I know when you had to sell your lunch to save him from going to jail. This you told me yourself. Olga oh, Lucas, now that you have nothing, he should do something to help you. Unless he has given to you once and you have mismanaged it. He has not. And I cannot force him. Olga, oh, his brother is very nice. But the wife is the problem. Eh? Any time he made promises, she will just step on it. I don't know what you have done to her that she hates us so much, Oga. Eh? It's okay, it's all right. Please don't cry, eh? <sighs> Oga Lucas, I will give you a check for 50,000 Naira now to enable you to send the children back to school. But it's not every time I'll be giving to you. So you must go back to your brother. Try and talk sense into his head. 
He should help you now that you are alive. Let me ask you something. If you die today, will he not spend money to bury you? Christ, this whole thing sounds unbelievable. Chris is so rich he can help you without batting his eyelids. So you should go back to him. Eh? If his wife is the problem, then go and see him when she's not around. you I'll use this money carefully. Oh, I'm sure I can trust you. Oh, God, thank you very much. Madam, it's okay. Oh, no, 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 please don't kneel down. It's all right. It's all right. Thank you, thank you very much. I, I will come and visit you very soon. Eh? Okay. Take care of yourself eh, and the children. Eh? Thank you. Let me see you over there. Hi, darling. Oh, hi, darling. How are you? I'm fine. Darling, mm -hmm. your uncle is here. He's been waiting since morning. He complained he was at your office earlier, but your security man refused to let him in. My dear, my uncle is becoming a pest to my life. I'm getting fed up with his problems. Today, children's school fees. Tomorrow, medical bills and all the rest. Please, just tell him to go. Let him see me next week. I have a very busy schedule today, and I may be coming home late tonight. Well, whatever you say. But I think you should give him attention. Make him go. Okay. I'll call you back. Bye-bye.
Michelle. Michelle. Please sit down. I want to talk to you. All right, Uncle. Thanks for the food and drink. You're welcome, Uncle Lucas. But I must let you know that I am suffering. It is true, each time I come here, you feed me and give me money. But that's not enough for me. I am a man. I have a wife with five children. I feed and train them from the goodwill I receive from people. Sarah, I was not like this before. I was a successful businessman until your husband got into trouble with his bank. He was swindled of over 600,000 naira by a dubious customer. I spent my last cobble, sold my only plot of land at Ikeja to save him from going to jail. I took responsibility of his secondary education to university level until he got his first job with the bank. But I'm sorry, I have to tell you all this as the wife. Since then, I've been in this suffering. Today, Chris appears to be avoiding me because I told him that the 2,000, 3,000 he gives me each time I have problems does not help me. I even suggested to him to open a small trading store for me to manage. Now tell me, Sarah, how long will I continue to be a beggar and burden to people when I have somebody like Chris? It's okay, Uncle Lucas. Please, don't let this worry you so much. I'll see that he helps you start something soon, okay? Okay. I'm really, really sorry about everything. Okay. Please do take your drink. Excuse me. Money, money, money for school fees and all whatnot. Does this thing that I pluck money from trees? Well, from what you told me, I think he has some good ideas. Well, I see. Tell me, what good idea does he have this time? Well, he wants you to open a small store for him instead of coming here often to ask you for money. And I think that's brilliant. You see? Don't you see? I told you that my uncle has become a pest. He's able body for goodness sake. Look, he has mentioned something like this before and I promised to do it. In fact, I even told him to be patient and give me some time. And now he complains to the whole world and sits tight in my house as if I'm Father Christmas. Honey, how can you say such a thing of your uncle? Okay, because he told me his problem. I have not become the whole world, eh? I didn't say that. Listen to me, Chris. You're indebted to this man. He saved you from going to jail years back. At least I heard it from you that he sold his only landed property to make up the money that to pay the time. Hey, Sarah, Sarah, please, please don't you stop. I am tired, okay? You listen to me, I'm not finished. You told me yourself that when your parents could not afford your school fees, you moved over to him. And from then, he took responsibility of paying your school fees from secondary to university. I can't believe you could have woman. Give me a break, okay? Let me finish because very soon some people start thinking I'm the one poisoning your mind, standing in their way. 
only last year. You bought a plot of land close to the very one he sold to bury you. How much did you buy it? Six million naira. Now, can you realize you're indebted to this man? Come out and help this man. Please. Please. I beg in the name of God. I just came back. Uncle, it's too late to discuss anything now. I'll tell them to prepare a room for you. Go home in the morning and see me later in the office around the late night. Okay? Okay. Good night, Uncle. Good night. Good morning. Yes. How are you? Ah, fine, thank you, sir. Is your husband back? Oh, now? yes, he is. He's in church. Thank God. Good morning. Thank you. Is you? Gently. Lucas. Ah, it's your Philip. How are you? I'm fine. You're welcome. Thank you. Please have a seat. Uh, your wife came to me yesterday night looking worried. But when she said you've not returned from Chris's place, then I knew probably you decided to pass the night there. That was exactly what happened. Yeah. Joy! Joy! Papa too! Get me color Okay. So, what did he say this time? As I told you before, mm -hmm. this is not the problem. Mm -hmm. He's willing to help me. Mm -hmm. He even said I should come to his office this morning. Mm -hmm. I know he still loves me. He knows he has no other person to call his father. No. Chris had been helping me until that witch called Sarah came into his life, took control of him and his world. Hmm. She seized Chris and chased every other family member away. Her smiles are mere camouflage. Her tongue is as sweet as honey. But when you turn your back, she will stab you. My God. I played the role of his father when he married her. I performed all the traditional rites. I embarked on all travels throughout the course of the marriage. Today, this woman is sitting on every good thing that comes my way. Oh, God. Sarah, you came into my family. I accepted you and married you. Today, You've turned to be my greatest nightmare. You said what is due to me cannot come to me. God, look at this and judge. Our ancestors, you said when a person takes off what belongs to a child, by the time his hand is heavy, it will come down to the child. Sarah, oh Sarah, you are thinking what is due to me. When your hands are heavy, you put them down for me. Uncle, I have heard all you said. I want you to know that since my father died, I have no other person to call father other than you. Do you know, Uncle? that this position I find myself today wouldn't have been possible without you. If I deny you, uncle, I deny God. It's my wish to see you come back to business again, but not the petty trading you want. There are certain things you'll do to that business, uncle, and people will laugh at me. I want you to go back to your old trade, the motor spare parts. In fact, uncle, I want you to start looking for a shop today. As soon as you get one, come. 
I'll give you five million naira to start with. And I've also decided to build a duplex for you on one of my plots in the Victoria Island. Uncle, I think it's my responsibility to put you back to business and make sure you live comfortably again. Chris! Uncle. My lifespan has increased. When a child shows favor to his father, he gets more blessings. May God continue to bless you abundantly. Amen, Uncle. Amen. You will live long. Amen. But there's one offer I do not like. Which offer is that? Instead of building a house for me in the Victoria Island, I prefer my area where you can buy a plot of land for 20,000 Naira and build a small boys' quarter on it for me. I cannot live in the Victoria Island to be too <laughs> big for me. Uncle. Okay, Uncle. We'll talk about that later. Excuse me. Hello? Chairman Meadows Halls? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll call you back. Thank you. Bye-bye. Baba Chooks, welcome. Thank you. How did it go? Please sit down. Did you meet him? Sit down. God has blessed us. How? Chris has offered to give me five million naira to go back to my motor park business. You what? Baba Chooks? Oh. Ruko. Baba Chooks, stop joking. No, I don't like it when you joke like this at all. I am serious. He says if I find a store today, I can come for the money. Eh? Papa Jones, are you rich? That is no. not all. He's planning to build a house for us at the Victoria Island. Uh -huh. But I told him that that's a waste of money. Uh -huh. I suggested that he should come here and buy a plot of land and build a boys' quarter for us on it. Oh, oh Papa Jones, are you sure? I am sure. It is the truth, the whole truth. God, oh God, thank you God, so I shall live to see the sun rise again, oh God, you've given us victory, he has given me victory, I will lift him higher, the over, I will lift him higher, set up, come up for God, I get holy ghost, I not get the rescue, I get holy. Ah, oh yeah, look at Tony. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. One girl's time. Yes. Please sit down. Thank you. How is your family? They are fine. How is business? So so. What brought you to our side today? I'm looking for a shop. Shop? Sure. There is a shop in the next street. Somebody parked out three days ago. I can take you there. Have a look. All right, let's go. Somewhere. Please take care of the shop. I'm coming. I was at your place yesterday to inform you, but Sarah told me you'd be coming home late. You would have told her. My wife knows virtually everything that I'm going to do. However, Uncle, where's the shop and how much is it? The shop is at Ladipo. The cost is 60,000 Naira per annum. The landlord is asking for two years' rent. Um, Uncle, listen. I didn't know you could get a shop so soon. 
I thought it would take you up to a month before you can see a good shop. I have a consignment of goods worth 500 million naira I must clear this week. I'll give you the money by the end of the month. Uncle, please, I want you to understand, okay? Can you give me money to pay for the shop and wait? There is no need for that, Uncle. No need. I'll give you the money in bulk. Anyway, you can always get another shop if you lose that. The most important thing, Uncle, is to have the money. My house rent is due. The quick notice has expired. The landlord is threatening to throw me out. I wouldn't have disturbed you if you had given me the money. Can you give me 25,000 naira to pay my landlord? No, uncle, why don't you talk to the landlord? Make him see reason with you. In less than four weeks from today, you'll have the money. I don't have cash now. Uncle, I want you to be patient. Uncle, use this for transportation. Please. Thank you. Okay. Bye. I'll talk to the landlord. Good. And I'll be patient. Better, Uncle. After all, I've been patient for 15 years, suffering and waiting for your promises. Uncle, don't take it that way. I won't come here again. You will send for me when you are ready to help me. Uncle, for 15 years... I, I'm in dust straits myself, Uncle. I've actually been waiting for us to cut my birthday cake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, Chief, 
It doesn't matter, you know, there. This is more than being present. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Chief. In fact, we're about stepping out of the car when you call King. Your driver can meet me up at the airport with a check. <laughs> okay, Chief. I'll call as soon as I come back. Chief, Chief. Double Chief. <laughs> I'll call you. Thank you. <laughs> One million naira. <laughs> So, how is my hair tie? Lovely. Shall we? Mm -hmm. Um, the TV? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Uh, Madame Olga don't travel yesterday. 
Mana, I hope nothing. Hey, please, when they come back, tell them that our landlord has thrown us out of the house. Ah. Mana, I'm sorry. I'll go tell the guy if you come back. Go and pick the kid there, Orient, 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 try the dish. Ura Magazine, thank you. Goodness, somebody do need 10 million naira to a church? I know Chris. Me? He's a billionaire. He's got chains of businesses. Wonder. Eh, his family and close relations must be having a swell time then. Sure. Ten million naira. Hey. Now, wow. Now, so you will get money. <laughs> Talk about money. Chris is loaded. What happened? We came in this morning and got your message. Our landlord threw us out of the house. Without a quick notice? We are owing him for more than one year. And our quick notice has long expired. Oh my God. People must not hear this. Where is Uncle Lucas? He left for the hospital. He complained he didn't know how he was feeling. Oh, honestly, Auntie. This place is not good for you at all. My husband felt terribly bad when he heard this news. In fact, he said uncle should come immediately to the office and collect money for a decent three bedroom flat. You know he's supposed to be the house for you in Victoria Island. In fact, he wants people to live here today or tomorrow while work comes on your house project. It's all right. I'll tell him immediately he comes back. Um, okay. Can I see the good Samaritan that brought you here? Oh, he's gone to work. Uh, he gave us this place too. Anyway, the wife is at home. Let's go and see her. Okay. Please, Auntie. Tell Uncle to come immediately to the office. I'm totally ashamed that you're here. Schools are about to close. And I won't be happy if the children return to join you and Uncle in this place. I promise everything will be all right for now. Okay? Take care of Uncle Lucas. Bye-bye. Eh? I've been waiting for you to come back. Is it true? Your uncle is living in hell with his family. That's the only way I can describe it. How? I wish you could go there yourself. At least I have a feel of the shame I experienced this morning. Grace, this is a man who claimed made you what you are today. Yet with all your money, he's living so wretched. I think I should stop talking to you about matters that concern your family relationship. Because you never take my advice, serious. Look, woman, I sent you to Uncle Lucas to assess the situation and report back to me and not to come back to school me. If you don't want to give me a clear picture of the situation, you can forget it. No! Very good. I wish you can be man enough to go there yourself. To see where your uncle is watching. Perhaps you may find people there who will congratulate you on your 10 million naira donation to the church. Charity begins at home, not outside. Sarah, are you out of your
your mind? Watch your tongue! I don't watch my tongue because I'm ashamed of you! No, that's enough, man! You don't yell at me like that, Chris! All I'm saying, dear husband, is if you made up your mind to help your uncle, do so fast. If you release what you promised, he wouldn't have been thrown out in the first place. This wouldn't have happened. I think I should just shut up my mouth. Do that! It's just impossible. wife is here to see you. Okay, let's hurry. Pa, auntie, please, come in and sit down. Sit down. We came in this morning and heard what happened. So I sent Sarah to find out if it was true. Auntie, I am very, very sorry about what happened. But I said Uncle Luca should come and see me. Okay. Actually, it doesn't matter who comes. I guess Uncle is annoyed, and rightly so too. But I've written two checks here in case I go out. This is five million now for Uncle's business. And this is another 250,000 naira to rent a place. Auntie. I cannot come to that place to see Uncle. I am ashamed. Please, make sure he gets a house within three days. You can tell him to pick up the five million naira check himself. Auntie, take this to him. I did not come for the money. <laughs> so, why did you come? Your uncle is dead. my plot of land at Ikeja and the ghost in my shop. That's okay, but step into the car, let's go. <laughs> Calm down. The most important thing is your freedom, which you've gained. Enter the vehicle, let's go. <laughs> Listen to me, Chris. You're indebted to this man. He saved you from going to jail years back. 
At least I heard you from you that his soul is only landed properties to make up the money to pay the price. Sarah, Sarah, please, please don't you stop. If you made up your mind to help your uncle, do so fast. You can release what you promised. You wouldn't have been thrown out in the first place. This wouldn't have happened. <laughs> my kinsmen. <laughs> of what use is my wealth if I could not help the man who nurtured and saved me? <laughs> yes, Engineer Kola, any information from the presidency? Yes. The presidency will be sending a high power delegation to Christ soon. All right. Um, Dr. Jide, anything from the publicity? Uh, I've gotten across to a number of media houses and they promised to do it with large coverage. Oh, that's wonderful. Excuse me, gentlemen. Hello? Ah, Chief Rufus. Yes, he's here. Okay. Hold on for him. Your call. Okay. Hello, Rufus. You're supposed to be here. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're about rounding up this meeting when this call came. However, the Committee of Friends has resolved to coordinate and assist Chris with the sum of five million naira to give his uncle a befitting burial. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You can drop by my office tomorrow for more details. That's right. All right, then. 
fear. Gentlemen, we have to call it a day. Engineer Kola? Yes, Chairman. You're in charge of security. Consider it done. Okay. Dr. Jide, publicity. I'll do it for you. Trust you, guys. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Yes. We have levied ourselves 200 naira each to cover the burial expense. Exactly. We did a total sum of 7,000 naira, and almost everybody here has paid. This is so far what we have done before you came. Elders, have I spoken your mind? Yes. yes. Right. Yeah, right. Thank you, my elders. It's unfortunate that my uncle died this way. But that should not be the reason to throw away his cups. I have read all your minds. And I know the question on your lips is, where was Chris when his uncle died in penury? All of you here will share from the blame. Because most of us benefited from his generosity when he was in business. 
and alive. But for how long shall we continue to blame one another? I have heard gossips and murmurs. But I plead that we should forgive one another and think together on how to at least give our brother a befitting burial. By my position in the society, I cannot hide to bury my uncle. No. no. Government is aware that my uncle is dead and a delegation has paid me a condolence visit already. Before I left home this afternoon, six governors called me on the phone to express their sympathy. My business partners and friends here in this country and overseas are also aware that my uncle is dead. So, we can no longer bury his corpse alone. I want you all to give me your moral support. To stand behind me to receive the world that will gather to bury our brother. My uncle was a great man. A man of the people. A man with a large heart. Be a man. Right. Calm down. All right. Where would you show right? We are not going to rush because I want the most befitting burial for my great uncle. He remains in a private mortuary for six months while I put up a befitting mansion where he will lie in state. Thank you. Is this most not too much? I don't think so. We should allow him to give his uncle a befitting burial. I want to say something. Shut up, Boniface. Just shut up. Please, allow him to speak. What does he have to say? We are talking of important people. Come to our home. And not to Guguru and cakes of pan wine. <coughs> Chris is our illustrious son, with your friends and associates all over the world. Chris, on behalf of fellow elders, I can assure you that we have our weights solidly behind you. We are also in support of all your plans towards the barrier. Am I in order, elders? You yeah, are in no order. <coughs> Please, look at all these people that surround you here, including the so-called elders, are all wolves and vultures waiting to prey on you. Don't insult my elders, Boniface! They have said all sorts of unspeakable things about you. You are worth nothing to them. But to my greatest surprise, Immediately they saw you, they began to praise you. And now, they have accepted everything you said. Look at me. I drink a lot, but I am not drunk. And I stand here to tell you the truth. Do not use your brother's dead body to make carnival. But if you like her, you can invite all the 36 governors. You can even invite the American president. Fly your brother's dead body in a presidential jet. You can even put him in a gold coffin and build skyscrapers for him. But dead bodies don't speak. Neither do they say thank you. Boniface, sit down. For the very last time, sit down, Boniface. Drunkard, sit down. I speak the truth. Whether you like it or not. Chris, the only thing you owe your dead brother now is to open the ground and put him there quietly. Don't let the vultures mislead you. Boniface, sit down. 
Now listen to me, Sarah, and listen to me real good. If you want to be here with us, you must do as we tell you. I will not do it. You must do it. You're accusing me for and God will judge you. Don't mention God's name. Not in your wrongdoing. If you want to be here with us, you must do as we tell you. I repeat the words. I swear you must do it. Stop that Sarah. Do you think you're better than anybody here? I wonder. You may be rich, but your money means nothing to this country. Yes. If truly you want to be in our midst, you must give us what she got as a mark of remarks around you. Yes. Here. If you did not act wickedly, look at you shut up, up. May shut up. Yes. You are talking about accusing me falsely. Can you swear, Sarah? Can you swear that I did not pass it for every look at us? Yes. God, you're my witness. Dress up so that we can take it to them. What good? What are you talking about? So you want me to accept what I'm not guilty of? You want me to accept that I stopped you from giving financial help to your uncle? Do you realize the implications of that? That you have a hand in your uncle's sight? By sitting on the millions you promised him? No, Chris. No. Please, honey, if truly you love me, you can as well carry my cross. But I told you, a thousand times I told you to help your uncle fast. You kept procrastinating. You never listened. Now your kinsmen think I have a hand in your uncle's death by blocking promises you made to him. I cannot accept this blame. I'm sorry. I can't. Please, honey. You've got to be part of the proceedings. I'm sorry. Truly, I am. I promise to always listen to you. I know I've made a grave mistake. But, honey, please. Please. I need you now more than ever. I know you love me. Help me. Please. Chris, you can laugh before us on arrangements made so far. Thank you, my elders. First, I would like to thank all of you for the wonderful cooperation that you've all given to me and the planning committee. I would like to announce that our brother is set for his final journey home, and he will be buried in less than two weeks from today. All the necessary arrangements have been made. I have completed the mansion I promised to build for my uncle. The planning committee has drawn up a comprehensive program and budget for the burial which will be required for the hotel accommodation for our guests from abroad, government officials, and all the important personalities from other states. A foremost undertaker has been contracted to handle his cuffs. The casket and service charge will cost about 3.2 million naira. Order! The casket shall be delivered from the United States of America within the next seven days. 
An aircraft has also been chartered to enlist all important personalities that will come to the burial. ABC buses have been booked to transport people from states where flight is not in operation. Food and drinks will be handled by chefs from a five-star hotel in Abuja and details will be announced in 10 national dailies. There will also be a live coverage of the event by Minaj Broadcasting International, AIT International, Mori International, TBN TV, Channels TV, and the NTA Network. Thank you. clothes, shoes, and other things you feel you should put on, like tomorrow. But there are some other things I still have to get for you. Okay. I hope the day after tomorrow won't be too late. It's okay, no problem, sir. Thank you. Oh, 
Darling, excuse me. Where are you going? Let me look for a wristwatch. What about the kids? Let's finish with my uncle, okay? A gold watch. I think my uncle deserves it. Two hundred and fifty thousand naira. Look, honey, we already have a bill of seven hundred and fifty thousand naira. Add this gold watch to it. It comes to a million. Chris, Sarah, please, please. Look, I know what's good for him. Even in death, I want the best for my uncle. Please, have this to it. Fix them perfectly. Hmm. Please take them in to change them. Yeah? Thank you. Take away for them.
men will have to remove their caps. Father, we thank you for a time like this. We bless your name, O oh Lord. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and take total preeminence of our gathering tonight. Father, we thank you because you said, at any given time, in every situation, we should give praises and honor unto you. Come and chairman this occasion, for you know why we are here. Thank you, Jesus, for this gathering. In the mighty name of Jesus, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Brethren, the Bible says to everything, there is a season and a time for every purpose of the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. But we are not here today to dance or laugh. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are gathered here today to perform the final rites of passage for our beloved brother Lucas, who departed this sinful world six months ago. Death is inevitable. It is a price we shall all pay as human beings. But I tell you all human to take heart. Take solace in the fact that brother Lucas was a good man. He was one fine gentleman, selfless and human. He was so generous that he would rather sacrifice his resources to help his fellow brothers and sisters. Most people who benefited from his generosity have become prominent men and women. I look around me, I see distinguished men and women, beautiful people. And over there is a beautiful casket where Lucas' body lies. A beautiful casket was a fortune. And I said to myself, this man who was a great man, yes, he may have died a pauper, but today we are burying him in a multi-million narrow casket. But be comforted, all those who want, because I have no doubt in my mind that Brother Lucas is in heaven rejoicing with the host of heaven because the death of a righteous man is pleasing unto the Lord. But beyond all this symbolic greatness, brothers and sisters, our brother Lucas has gone to give account of his life. According to the book of Hebrew 9.27, it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this judgment. Now ask yourself, who is next? How prepared are you? to give account of your life. How well have you lived your life? Are you busy amassing wealth and wallowing in sin? Who and who have benefited from your wealth like our brother Lucas did? Of what use is your wealth if you cannot use it to help fellow beings in time of trouble? Look around you. That your brother needs help that your neighbor is hungry. Help him. Don't wait until he dies. May God help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Abide with me, fast falls are even tied. He was a man 
man who lives according to the standard of God. But it has pleased God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, the maker of everything, to call him back home. And we can now be rejoiced in a situation like this because the Bible says, in every situation we should give praise unto God. <laughs> I have not had in my mind that Lucas must have completed his assignment in this world. Today I'm saying to you, Lucas, as you lie in this grave, may your gentle soul rest in perfect peace. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Abide with me, first of all, I will die. Oh.